SQLite is perfect for running in production of most websites. Here I'll go through how you can use SQLite in production, what are the pros, what's the cons, and why is this even possible. It's a short video, um, and but it's a master course because there's not that much things you need to worry about when you're running SQLite in production. So let's get to it. First, why would you want to use SQLite in production? Well, there's three main reasons, at least for me. And the first one is that it's easy and simple. And because it's easy and simple, it's very easy to make it robust. There's not that many parts that are moving. The third thing is that it's very, very fast. If you don't need to scale to multiple computers, which you probably don't need, you can do vertical scaling instead of having multiple computers. If you can keep it on one computer, the, there's not a server and a client for their uh, for the database. That means that when a client calls your server, then you don't have to go to another server to fetch data. That sounds like a small thing, maybe even if it's on the same computer, but there's a lot of serialization there. There's a lot of things that goes on for you to do that. With SQLite, it's basically just a library. So things go extremely fast. There's this N plus one problem in databases that if you fetch something uh, for uh, for a lot of rows, it's uh, it takes a long time. But this not it's not really a problem in uh, SQLite, so you don't really have to optimize for this. Uh, there's a lot of things that you just don't have to optimize for, and so that's why it's perfect to run in production. If you're not convinced about these arguments, I actually made a video called SQLite is enough that explains why I think that for most websites, 95% of websites, SQLite is enough uh, for them. So let's get started with how to do this. SQLite is a so-called zero configuration database. What that means is that you, for the most part, don't really have to worry about configuration. Now there's three things that I would like to configure in most uh, times, so, and we'll go through them here. Number one, you probably want to configure SQLite to use something called write ahead journaling. Uh, right ahead locking, sorry. Uh, so that's the uh, form of journaling, and uh, I'm not very keen on the specific, but basically what it means is that the way that it synchronizes with the hard drive, it makes it a lot uh, faster, but it reduces the atomicity. So that means that if something have been approved, that this is the change that has happened, then it might not be part of the database in case that it goes down at that exact point. But with servers nowadays being so reliable, it's not really a problem. What right ahead locking gives you is a lot of performance boost. And so it, a lot of people have talked about this should probably be default for SQLite. So I always put it on and never look back. It's, it's such an important thing. And when people complain about SQLite being slow, it's probably because they didn't enable this here. This is really a performance boost. I also heard there's something uh, called wall two, and this is probably even better, but I haven't checked it out. So this is probably something you wouldn't want to check out, but it's very easy to set it on what you do is just writing inside the uh, SQL um, command uh, pragma space journal equal to wall ahead like w h l and that's it then it's enabled on all future transactions you probably don't have to worry about SQLite's database performance because in most cases 95% of websites it's not really an issue now uh, it's it's fast enough for almost everything. Now, if you're in a, a write heavy environment, you might want to think about some connection pooling because SQLite uh, uses uh, a serializer for reading. So I never had to do this. So it's never really been a problem for me, but maybe if you're in a write heavy environment, that might be a problem. But that is again, is a champagne problem, a problem that is very beautiful, gifted, and you should be thankful for this problem. Um, so yeah, don't worry about performance. Uh, one uh, one example is that there's something called PocketBase, which is a API kind of server like Firebase that you can host yourself. And and it's using SQLite to run. And basically that can on a four euro machine have 10,000 connections. You can easily send a lot of data forwards and backwards uh, with SQLite. You don't need to scale for the most cases. And if you need to scale some caching, a bigger machine is usually 
good enough. Backing up SQLite databases is extremely simple. It's just a file and you could theoretically just copy paste that file. On most cases, you're okay. Uh, but in some rare cases, there comes some inconsistency in data. So what is recommended is you uh, write uh, SQLite uh, your database and then quotation mark where you write dot dump that will give you a dump of the database in SQL uh, form like in a pure SQL form that is very compatible uh, with other databases I think you can even put it just in as MySQL and uh, Postgres without much problems but uh, you can just funnel that uh, to a file and then boom you're done so what we have is a cron job that's just running that and just shipping it somewhere so that it's uh, safe and secure and that's basically our backup system there is newer solutions such as something called lightstream i haven't used it but a lot of people recommend it and it's apparently streaming your database to uh, s3 instance and this makes it possible to recover from the exact moment that you lost connection this is something that's not really i think possible with other database solutions so this is very interesting um, thing that's so easy to set up apparently so i'm gonna have to check that out um, before i can recommend that but that's something i'll checking uh, in the future and seeing how that works that's it for this master course as you saw it's very very easy uh, to run SQL light in production for most cases if you don't hit the limits and that's the 95% of the website if you don't hit the limits of performance you will usually just easy to go very very easy and yeah good luck with it and write to me what you think what are your experiences with running SQL light in production or maybe staging environment I'll see you in the next one cheers